Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here's something a little different and more in the spirit of ham radio home brewing. Now these little radio modules are manufactured by Nice RF and they can be used in a huge variety of applications. Now apart from the top SA628F30 modules, these smaller SA828 modules are analog FM, receive and transmit. They are simply a self-contained radio transceiver mounted onto that little breakout PCB. Now they come in three different bands, either UHF, which is 400 to 470 megahertz, or VHF, 134 megahertz to 174 megahertz, which both of these cover the two meter and 70 centimeter ham band. Now there's also a third band module, which covers from 320 megahertz up to 400 megahertz, which I guess can be used for more commercial or special requirements. Now the transmit and receive frequency can be set independently with a bandwidth of either 12.5 gigahertz or 25 gigahertz. So perfect for FM repeaters or two meter narrow band or 70 centimeter wide band. Now power output comes in two levels. Low power is rated at 500 milliwatts, while high power is rated at 1.5 watts. CTCSS and DCS is also supported, so great for amateur repeaters or DCS for PMR. But also find an onboard microphone and PTT button. Now these are also exposed on the breakout side pins, making connections to other devices quite easy. Now there's a speaker connection which is available via those breakout pins, along with connections for a variable resistor to control the volume output. Now I also received a little speaker with mine, which doesn't actually sound too bad. And because it comes in this little plastic housing, it makes it quite easily mountable into any project boxes that you're possibly going to use. Now on board, there's a one PPM KDS TCXO, which keeps it nice and stable and on frequency. Also on the board, you'll find a small rotary dial. Now this can be used to set one of the 16 programmable channels. Although it's quite small and quite fiddly, so in a real world situation, you may just want to use the four bit signal pins, which are four, five, and six, and seven, but more about those pins later. Now, if you're interested to hear what the onboard mic sounds like, then check this out. This is uh, M0 DQW testing. M0 DQW testing. Testing one, two, three, four, five. This is uh, M0 DQW testing. Now you may be wondering, what can you use this for? Well, there's a few applications that spring to mind. You could create your own little FM transceiver with a 3D printed case, for example, or maybe you might wanna make a packet radio station or an APRS tracker. Now the side pins also include a UART connection. So reprogramming the radio from an Arduino or any type of single board computer could be done. Of course, you will need to write your own application but on GitHub, if you do a search, there are some Python scripts already made. Now, later in the video, I'll be attaching the UHF version to a Raspberry Pi via a USB sound card. This will then become an RF transmitter and receiver for an all-star node. This is possible due to the PTT, the COS line, the mic and speaker connections being easily accessible from those side pins on the board. As I will only use one frequency for my all-star node, I do not need to worry about controlling the channel change, but I do need to program the module before connecting it all up. Now using the supplied USB bridge dongle here, I can temporarily wire it to the SA828U module so that I can program the transmit and receive frequency along with setting the CTCSS tone and any squelch levels. Now once you plug the USB adapter into your computer, you should be able to see a new virtual COM port. Now this is the COM port that we need to enter into the programming software. Now just set the COM port and then press the open button below it. Then all of the module's programming data will be read back to the software. You can now go ahead and program each of those 16 programmable channels. Now each channel does have its own transmit and receive frequency, so don't forget to program both. Now I mentioned earlier that CTCSS is supported but according to the software, at least, it appears that it's a global setting, which means it applies to all channels. Slightly disappointing if you wanted to use this for repeater operation, 
because obviously not all repeaters use the same CTSS tones. I guess you'd just buy a £20 Bafeng if that's what you wanted to do. This device is more designed towards the hobbyist and making your own radio system. Now, there's also a squelch level that you can set using the drop down combo box here. Now, if you're using a CTSS or DCS tone on receive, then you may as well just set this to zero, just so that you can pick up any of those weak stations. Now, once finished, just press the set button and that sends all that new channel data to the nice RF module. Now, the RF power level is not controlled by programming. Well, at least not the internal software. The power level is controlled via pin eight on the board. Now, what you do is you leave it disconnected for high power or 1.5 watts. Then you apply a low level signal or ground to pin eight to enable low power. Now you could use a physical switch for this or even use a pin on a single board computer. So back to the practical demonstration and I'll show you in this video using one of these SA828 UHF modules as a transceiver and receiver connected to a Raspberry Pi via a USB sound card to provide an RF connection into the All Star network. Now, if you're not sure what All Star is, then it's a voice over IP solution that's been taken on board by hams around the world. Now, this is similar to Echolink and IRLP. Now, I do have some All Star videos on my channel if you want to know more. Now, thank you to Gary Dion for his USB sound fob diagram here. It shows very clearly the wires from the sound fob. And with my state of the art high end top tier line drawing, you can see the connections between the sound card and the SA828 module. We have the PTT line to tell the module when to transmit. We have the receive and transmit audio. And then we have something called the COS line, which is connected to pin nine of the module. Now this allows the all star node to tell whether there's a signal being received by the SA828 module. It's so it doesn't start transmitting while it's actually receiving. Now ignore the spaghetti of wires here. I was just prototyping as you do, and I'll fit all this neatly into a box. Well, eventually, but here's an example of it all being used. This is M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing audio. Testing audio, testing audio, M0 DQW, over. If you've used the SA828 or even a similar module, let us know what you've done with it. What project did you make and how well does it work? Now, one last thing to point out, and it's a really important factor, and that's that these modules are not filtered. You would have noticed that my example, I use a dummy load to try and reduce any spurious emissions hitting outside of my property. So if you're thinking of using one, then please check the emissions before attaching an antenna. Until next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next video.